Hello everyone, K Knife Switzerland here and today I want to talk about something that's a bit controversial maybe and that's Rockwell Hardness. It has been quite a topic recently in our community and while I think it is very good that we are talking about Rockwell Hardness in the first place, um, I think it's very important that Rockwell Hardness um, is put into context and then um, I've stayed out a little bit uh, on that whole topic uh, when it comes down to posts and videos because I wanted to see where we all are steering as a community and um, now I decided that I will just make a little talk video so no knives in this video or anything uh, practical just theory if that's your thing stick with me now Rockwell hardness as we all know most likely if you're watching this video at least it determines how hard a knife blade or just a material is and if we test, and that's the first thing I want to make, um, uh, that then I want to bring to your attention. If we test a knife and we test if it's a folding knife, for example, at the pivot area, right, where the blade is connected with the handle. And this is usually where testing is done with a standard indentation Rockwell test. That's going to tell you how hard the blade is at that uh, spot. However, and um, in my testing, I prefer to use um, a device that's called a UCI Rockwell tester. That's basically um, uh, working by, <coughs> excuse me, that's basically working with ultrasonic, meaning that you don't have an indent and you can, and that's very important, also test on non-flat surfaces, which you cannot do by design with a standard indentation Rockwell tester, which pushes a diamond inside the steel because there it has, uh, it needs to be flat. With a UCI tester, you can basically uh, imagine yourself, to, uh, that you can imagine that device like a pen. If my finger is a rod, a round rod of steel or, or a knife, bevel, whatever, you just touch it, wait a little and it vibrates and the vibration that are caused with ultrasonic will be measured to 0 0.1 Rockwell exact. It's very exact. And you will give, uh, you will get a very precise Rockwell number for that spot you were measuring. And the cool thing now is you can measure at the actual edge area, which is, as I've said previously, sadly quite often overheated from grinding and or sharpening, which you have to distinguish. Now, so that's just ev just just about the Rockwell number itself, without putting the Rockwell in the context, which I'm about to do now. Be aware that just because the Rockwell test, if it's a standard Rockwell test, which is like always the case, as far as I'm concerned, almost no one uses UCI, UCI Rockwell testing. Almost always you will have a flat area tested that is a long way away from the actual edge area where it matters. This is why a lot of knife guys, uh, Chef Calari, AK Super Steel Steve, Michael Christie, uh, basically all the sharpness gurus if you will will tell you if you get a new knife and you want to see how well it performs you need to sharpen it a few times because the sad reality is that quite often the edge area is overheated from grinding uh, from sharpening if you have bad luck uh, the, the part of the blade as well will be overheated and you will never get to non overheated or non fatigued steel as some guys say but I don't want to dive into that. I have a separate video up on that. So with that out of the way, I wanted to repeat it. Rockwell hardness. Let's say you have two knives. One is 62 Rockwell and the other is 62 Rockwell. And they are made of the same steel. It is a scenario that can uh, occur, occur very lightly. And um, because we have a lot of manufacturers out there who use several steels. Yeah, let's just say you have two knives made out of M390 steel. And uh, we have both of these knife at, at knives at 62 Rockwell, which, they sh which is a good hardness for M390 steel. Sadly, a lot of knives aren't there, but let's just assume you found two knives that are made out of M390 steel from Bowler and are at 62 Rockwell. It may very well be the case if you do, let's say, a cardboard cutting test or a cat rod test. Let's, let's keep it, let's keep it uh, to ISO norms and stuff. Let's say you have two 62 Rockwell M390 knives and you put them in a cat rod machine. This is basically the standard way of measuring edge retention. It's designed for machining knives. It's not 100% applicable for the 
uh, hand held knives which have torque, but you put both of these in a Catra machine. Chances are that one will perform significantly better than the other, even though they are at the same Rockman number. It could very well be that one of these knives outcuts the other by, let's say, 50%, that it has 50% uh, more edge retention. Even though the Rockwell is the same and the steel, and the reason for that uh, lies in the heat treat. For example, uh, if you, you, during heat treat you bring the steel up to a so-called critical temperature, or also called austenizing temperature, where you will put carbon in the steel into solution, and the carbon will form bonds with other elements, and that can, and there it is very important to see what kind of elements you bring into solution, because um, higher uh, austenizing temperatures will bring more and also, depending on the steel and some parameters, other elements into solution. Elements you might want or don't want for a knife application, okay? And then also maybe even more important if we, in regard to our example with the two M390 blades, how they are tempered is very important because a lot of steels have two tempering ranges, a so-called low temper and a so-called high temper range. The low temper is in the 400 Fahrenheit uh, range and, or, or 200 degrees Celsius. The higher tempering range uh, is in the around 900 to 1000 degree Fahrenheit or around 450-500 degrees Celsius range. And it really depends on the steel where you want to temper. Um, for example, you can do a high and a low temper with Nitrope 77, but you will never get a really good performance with the low temper method on Nitrope 77, and the high temper temper uh, method will be much better. On the opposite, and this is where I want to get at, a lot of tool steels. M390 is an example for a high, um, stainless tool and die cast steel. Um, in knife applications, studies have found, I want to uh, direct you to um, an article on knifestinnerds.com about Kruver and uh, Kruforge, where they compare different tempering ra uh, ranges. And also, if you speak German, on Roman Landes, he also is called Roman like I am, uh, Berg, he has uh, put out a book. And these guys, Larry Thomas on knifestinnerds.com and Roman Landes have found out, and I can only confirm, that on some steels you want to prefer a high temper, and on some steels you want to prefer the low tempering range. And um, now I don't want to reveal which I do on which of my steels, but um, if you talk about M390, yeah, I can say that the low temper is definitely to be preferred. Definitely. The, because at the high temperature, there will something happen called the high temper tempering will give you something called secondary carbides. Um, you will have a mini austenizing, if you will, again. And that's good for tools. Um, the wear resistance for tools will be higher. Okay, carbides are high, uh, are hard, you bring more carbides into solution. However, a thin knife edge will not be able to support, again, depending on the steel. Uh, but in M390 it's the case, uh, at least to my findings and from what I've seen from other uh, guys I talk to, knife makers, you you will have um, on the on the on the piece of paper or the 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 manufacturer will justifiably uh, will um, um, not a native speaker by data you will have a more bare resistant steel if you temper M390 at high temper. Um, however, uh, you will find that the edge of a knife in M390 at high temper will, in handheld use, most likely fail earlier or get dull quicker than a handheld uh, M390 edge at 400 degrees Celsius low tempering range, because the steel matrix will in the end dictate how well the carbides are held in it. And you really have to uh, think about that as well if you talk about knife performance. They can be at the same rock hardness, but tempering and austenizing will dictate what is in solution, what kind of carbides you have. And uh, I cannot speak for all steels, but M390 in the testing I have done, uh, definitely it shows that the M390 steel performs better at the lower tempering range. It is the case with a lot of other steels, but not all of them. So I just wanted to uh, direct your attention to this. Very, uh, thank you very much for watching and um, have a wonderful day.